I got you. Well, Blood Blood, this is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful David Greenwell. David, are you ready to do this? I am. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Excited to have you on. Let's go. David is a certified wellness coach. He's a fitness expert. He's an author. His company, Leanness Lifestyle University, helps its students lose excess fat for the last time. David, tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, why you do what you do. Um, so I'm in my late 50s. I've been doing what I do for quite a long time, but I've had a I always say, I don't have any idea why, but there's something in my DNA that has been extremely interested and passionate about fitness since I was quite young. Um, When I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I was a 235 pound power lifter. I mostly was, I'm I'm only 5'10". So I was mostly heavy because I wanted to be, but I also, you know, kind of used the power lifting as an excuse to eat a pound bag M&Ms as a pre-workout. You know, so, (laughs) um, but, but all throughout that, you know, all throughout that period, I did bodybuilding, I did powerlifting. So I had experience with cutting and getting lean, but, um, I myself was, you know, quite heavy. Finally, when I was about 32, which was 1997 for me, I was watching TV through the bottom of my feet, laying on the couch on my back. So on the TVs past my feet, you know, you can imagine I'm supine laying on my back looking out the bottom of my feet and I notice my gut is almost above my feet and I'm laying on my back and I thought David 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 come on now that's that's enough I'd had quite a stint at powerlifting I had you know I was a state level uh bodybuilder powerlifter but I'd done powerlifting for quite a while there and I hadn't done bodybuilding up at that point for about um 12 or 13 years um but uh but anyway so I said all right that's enough and over the you know next year or so, you know, I kind of started my own journey, and you know, I thought I had kind of the calories in, calories out. I've got you know, I can just do this, and and um, I kind of did, kind of didn't, had some success, uh, and then you know, but it was a rocky road. But I figured it out for myself, and I came at it from a very science evidence based perspective, you know, when I did. And what I ended up doing to kind of finish it off is I did a bodybuilding show in 1998, which again, I have, I hadn't done one in 12 years. And I said, I'm going to do this show. And through that, I really came at it from an evidence-based perspective, instead of kind of myths and legends and wives tales, or whatever you want to call them, um, that I saw so many other bodybuilders doing. And um, then I wrote an article, I had a, I had a a fitness business at the time with over 100,000 customers. And so I wrote an article kind of for them, for me, for them about that process of getting ready for the show, getting lean, and I titled it competition becomes a leanness lifestyle. And I really started to look at it like, what was I doing to get lean that mostly I shouldn't or couldn't do for life? It was in the early days of email, early days of the internet, the internet, the email was just coming in. And that's when I first started to share um, what I learned and the approach that I took with clients. So it was back in 98, wrote a book. Um, put that out, started an online coaching program in 1999. And I'll hush and, you know, see where you want to go from here. So that's kind of, that's kind of the the base of my experience. Nice. I I, I appreciate that. So you no longer do the uh, pound bag of M&Ms as pre-workout, David? (laughs) Correct. Correct. Haven't done that since, uh, you know, that 97, 98, 99 era. Um, And uh, yeah, quite, quite a, quite a difference, you know, since then, I, I, I had a mistaken belief in the first edition of my book that I wrote in 99. And it went through four revisions. And the final revision that's still out there was done in 2002. But the first in the first edition, I said, and then I corrected myself in future, I said, unless we're extremely gifted, we can get lean, but we can't live lean. I really had it in my head that you had to be have like some gift to be able to get the fat off and stay relatively healthy lean, not bodybuilder lean, but just relatively healthy lean. And I was flat out wrong. And I corrected myself in the future editions. And I said, I, I was wrong when I said that. And let me tell you why. And let me tell you, da, 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 da. So, and then over these 23 years online, I would say I was, I'm even more wrong about when I first said that. 
and it absolutely can be done, um, but not with the standard messaging that's out there. You know, that standard eat less, exercise more, calories in, calories out, that messaging is absolutely not going to work for most people. There's a sect of people, as you know, we all know. I, my dad, when he quit smoking, he said he smoked for 20 some years or whatever, and he said, I'm done smoking. And he was done. I mean, he was done. He didn't take another, another puff. So there are people that can do it, but that doesn't uh, reflect the majority. I appreciate that. So, so you had for a long time, and I, I appreciate that, 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 that I, I've had beliefs at one point in my life and we've taken new information. We get a little bit wiser and we recognize, well, you know what? I definitely wasn't right about that one. And it's not necessarily easy to do. So I, I appreciate you doing that. Um, that it, 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 it can be done by, by everyone. Everybody can have essentially whatever body they're interested in. I, I, I had on a note that I was going to write about for a long time and I threw it away yesterday, literally. Mm-hmm. I was going to write about um, that these are unrealistic expectations or standards of bodies that the people can have. And I just thought that's just not true. I think that everybody is capable of having a healthy, strong body that is similar to some of the things that we see on the internet and television. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, what, and what I would say for um, kind of the everyday, the everyday person out there who doesn't have necessarily aspirations of being a top, 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 whatever, they just want to be healthy. They just want to be relatively fit. They just want to be able to do the things they want to do. They want to get off medications, feel better, uh, be a good example for their kids and whatever, all of the, the aspirational, you know, kind of feelings-based um, things that, that people want. They absolutely can get to any healthy weight they want and they can live there. Now, to what degree can someone create an Adonis physique is going to vary, you know, where you're like, oh, everything's proportioned perfectly. And look at the shoulders compared to the waist and look at this compared to that. But that's really far less consequential for the everyday person who just says, I just want to have. I want to just have a relatively good level of fitness and just be at a healthy weight or, you know, somewhat lean and look like I, I do care. Cause I do care. I want to look like I do care about my health and fitness and that kind of thing. And, um, and I, and I will say 100% of people can achieve that. Well, I appreciate that. So what, what is the starting point? Is it deciding I want to get off medication. I want to have enough energy to play with my kids. I want my clothes to not fit lousily. Yeah. So for most people, they'll have kind of loosely, vaguely, not very clarified the reasons that they want to get off X amount of weight. And they may not know exactly how much weight. And some people will say, I don't care what the weight, how much weight I lose. I just want to feel. I just want to have a certain feeling, a certain look, a certain whatever. Um, so I think that, you know, for the, you know, for, uh, for most people having at least that initial spark desire kind of loose goal in their head, that's, that's going to be required. We've got to have something that says, Hey, I want to change from where I am to some better place or some different place. So there's, there's going to be that once we have at least a goal and a reasonable goal, but reasonable doesn't mean that it has to be five pounds in three months. Let's say you've got 50, 80, 100 pounds, whatever you've got that you, know, you want to lose. It could be somebody with 15 pounds. It doesn't mean reasonable doesn't mean we have to have it so slow that it's like, well, that's reasonable, five pounds in three months. That, that's, that's really slow and could be very demotivating for a number of people because we're just not seeing enough progress there. But once you've got a reasonable goal that makes sense for you in place, almost the next thing is we should drill into why. Um, Because a universal truth for me in my experience in working with people is when the why is strong enough, we'll find a way. And when it's not, we find an excuse. And I haven't found an exception to that. Um, Every person's path and journey will be somewhat different. 
not so distinctly uniquely different that we can't figure them out. I would say you're not terminally unique. You know, there are things, thankfully, as, as they are true in medicine, where while we are all different, when we go see a primary care physician and we need whatever care we need, we're different enough where they have to kind of go through a puzzle and figure us out. But we're not so different that, a, you know, a medical doctor looks at us and goes, I, I have no idea. You may as well be a giraffe. I don't, you know. So we have things that are, uh, you know, that, that fit all of us reasonably closely enough where we can kind of start there. Um, but then, you know, we're going to need to, you know, kind of drill down into the uniqueness of each person's journey, where they're starting from, where they're wanting to go, but we've got to figure out why. And most people, if you ask them what, okay, you say you want to lose 30 pounds, 50 pounds or whatever X of the excess. Why? Well, I just want to feel better. Okay. Well, if we leave it there, when tomorrow comes and we're supposed to roll out of bed and prep for the day and maybe get in 20, 30 minutes of exercise, what are we supposed to do? It's going to be rough because you've got all of these external obesogenic environment factors working against you. And the thing you've got working for you is I, I'd like to feel better. And that by itself is not likely to be strong enough to overcome those opposing forces that are always there in our modern environment working against us. So we have to, you know, kind of fight fire with fire. We have to come in it. We have to come at it stronger than people think uh, from that why perspective. And um, when we do that, it's kind of the second step. So we've kind of got a goal. We at least know we want to change. We want to, you know, do something. We want to go from a size, whatever gene to this gene or this dress to this dress or whatever. We've got a pair of pants or a dress hanging in the closet. We're like, I want to get back into that. Okay, great. That's a kind of the goal. Why? Why does that matter to you? And we come at that very um, intentionally, you know, in my program with my clients to help them drill, 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 and get, get as deep as we can with that so that there's an incredibly powerful driving force. And what we say is we need willpower driving will, I'm sorry, we need why power driving willpower. Hmm. We need why power driving willpower. Willpower alone, a lot of people think, you know, my, I know what my problem is. I don't have enough willpower. I just, my willpower sucks. And that's not true. Um, you could ask, you could poll your listeners. You could ask, you know, anybody that works for someone else, just as an example, when was the last time you were late for work? And most, not most, not 51% is most, 99% are going to say, I haven't been late in a year. Or they're going to say, I was late one time in a year. And it was because the blah, 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 something really major happened. And then you could ask them, George, you could say, well, are you not late because you love your work to death? And they'd be like, uh, no. Well, are you not late because you're always in a good mood? No. Are you not late because the kids are never sick? No. Are you not late because you're never sick? No. I mean, all the life things that can throw us for a loop are always there, yet these yet people who think they're broken, don't have any willpower, are never late for work. Wow. I mean, that's willpower, but here's, but, so why is that? Because their why for showing up on time is incredibly strong. And so that's kind of why I say, we've got to have why power driving willpower instead of just relying on willpower. I love it. <clears throat> that is a really, really, really great analogy right there. Uh, you know, it, <clears throat> I'll be honest. I pulled my, my clients a few years back and I had said, what are some, mate, what are some things I thought I, I thought I had an answer that they were going to give in my head? I thought they were going to say X. I thought it was going to go this direction. And I pulled my, my student members at the time and I said, tell me something you've done that's big, something you've accomplished that's big. And, you know, and what did you, what did you have to do to get it? And I got all those replies of people that, you know, um, you know, went to medical school, did this, did that, went and got my PhD, whatever, whatever the thing was, job related, education related, whatever it was, um, the thing that was, you know, obviously driving it was incredible why power, because every single one of them were doing it on no sleep. <laughs> they were trying to raise their kids. They had no money. 
they were living by, you know, I mean, it was just what they had to sacrifice to accomplish whatever it was outside of weight management, whatever it was that they accomplished, it was big and meaningful and, um, and just impactful to their life required incredible sacrifice, incredible willpower. And there wasn't a single person where it wasn't driven incredibly by why power. Cause if you would ask them at the time, why are you doing this? They would, they wouldn't have said, eh, you know, I'd like to be a medical doctor, I guess. No, I mean, they could just say because of this and this and this, you know, and, um, and so it became, you know, real, real clear. It seems to be recovered. It was partly reinforced and then just became even clearer that it's, it's why power driving willpower. People have overcome incredible challenges and they do it every single day. So no matter who's listening to this, you've already accomplished amazing things, no matter how seemingly in inconsequential you might think it is not that if someone's a medical doctor or whatever they think it's inconsequential they don't but there's a lot of people that think i haven't really done anything major yes you have if we really look at it you've done things that require incredible willpower and when you did it was driven by why power i love it it's just, it's just universal mm -hmm. so i believe that that at least one of your programs is is 18 weeks tell me a little bit about that Right. The very first, we're an, we're an, uh, an educational based platform. So, um, you know, we kind of say lifestyle education, uh, evidence based lifestyle education for uh, permanent weight control is kind of how we come at it. We come at it in a progressive kind of bite sized, you know, uh, approach. And the first course, so to speak, um, is called Lifestyle 180. So if you think of like, you know, the coursework you took in high school and college, there was algebra 101, it was English one, you know, so lifestyle 180 kind of falls in, in line with that. And the 180 is, is a play on we're trying to turn our body and our life around, you know, believe it or not, when I was first thinking of the name many years ago for the first course, I almost called it lifestyle 360. And then I went, wait a minute, we're, we're going to start, we're going to finish where we started. No, we don't, we don't want to do that. So lifestyle 180, we want to go halfway around, we want to turn our body and life around. And it's 18 weeks. So Lifestyle 180 kind of goes into that. Honestly, George, the reason it's 18 weeks is because, again, doing this for so long, when I first started it, I was like, let's do five or six weeks. I can teach you everything you need to know about nutrition and exercise in five or six weeks. Onward you go. Best of luck. Thanks so much for stopping. Have a great day. And the recidivism was too high. It, it, people did learn. People did get uh, weight off initially, people did get confidence in that six weeks. And I was able to get all the basics of nutrition and exercise taught. Here's your plan. Let's go. You got it. Eat less and exercise more. Onward we go. Recidivism, very high. And honestly, way back when, I love it now, but way back when, I didn't want to create an 18-week course. I said, it's going to be incre a ton of work to have all the curriculum, to have it all this and that and progressive and 18 weeks versus six, holy cow, it's three times the work. And then it's got, and I, you know, I was talking to a friend and I said, I don't want to do this. I said, it's going to be tremendous work. I said, but I have to. And I said, I have to, because I, I'm not okay with people leaving, leaving too early, getting all of the basics but not having the additional emotional fitness support was such a huge part of this. So I ended up creating Lifestyle 180. Then it goes on to, you know, uh, Lifestyle 218, which is kind of like the next 18 weeks. Then it goes on from there. It's all, it's all of course, you know, uh, personal choice of the person. You know, it's up to them. There's no ongoing, you know, where someone has to stay or, or whatever. But we start with 18 weeks because even if you've just got 10 or 15 pounds to lose, we are if you follow the program, you are for sure going to get the goal. If you have that, you know, um, but then what, well, then we, we have maintenance, you know, and getting the goal isn't living at goal. And everything we do is about getting it off one more time for the last time where, you know, I haven't met anyone unless they're a wrestler trying to make weight or, you know, someone who wants to lose the weight and then regain it. You know, um, if you're in a <laughs> weight class based sport, you know, great, we get it. But other than that, you know, people have a great fear over losing it again and then regaining it. And sometimes that's a showstopper for people where they're like, I don't even want to start mm. if I'm going to regain it. 
And so everything we do is about that. And that's why the initial course, people go, oh my gosh, aren't, why not six weeks, you know? Because six weeks, I can teach you the basics of nutrition and exercise, but it's not long enough to get you the other missing components and the continued support to continue the journey. 18 weeks, because that's what it's probably going to take to lose weight for the last time. One Lose weight one more time for the last time. That is that is solid as well, David. I love it. <clears throat> well, David, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how can they engage with Leanness Lifestyle University? The, the easiest way is, um, you know, had I known 20 some years ago when I said competition becomes a leanness lifestyle, if that was going to be such a mouthful for all of us to have to continue to say and figure out, is it two N's and two S's or what, you know? So for the website, I just made it lluniversity.com. And I'll just make it simple. Everything, you know, social links, email, whatever, it's all there. lluniversity.com would be the place for people to go to, to uh, ask me a question or learn more or whatever. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show David your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to lluniversity. And check out the great resources that David has put together. And if you're like so many of us who are struggling to or wanting, struggling, wanting, desiring to feel better, live healthier, lose weight, whatever it might be, check it out. Thanks again, David. Thanks so much for having me. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.